Good evening, everybody. I just want to uh, make a video. I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while. Actually, I was thinking about making a website, to be honest with you. Um, I should say at the outset that uh, this video will probably contain some uh, coarse language. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, don't approve of, or you're underage or something like that, then uh, you know, please don't watch it. I don't think it's going to be gratuitous or really bad, but probably will be some. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it right at around 3 out of 10, you know? Somewhere in that range, 3 or 4 out of 10. But uh, this video is uh, something that I've been very interested in of late. Um, you might even go so far as to say that I'm quite passionate about it. Um, but uh, it's a video about, I don't know what to call it. I wanted to call it, what kind of Jesus are you? That's what I wanted to call it. But uh, I'm not sure that captures it. Well, it captures it, but it doesn't capture this particular point I'm trying to make here. Um, basically, I, I won't even say what it's about. I'll just let it be whatever it is about and let it be that, so I uh, don't want to pin myself in here, but uh, so the question is, what kind of Jesus are you? Obviously, if you're not a Christian, then you're not any kind of Jesus, and I could debate that point, but uh, I'll try, try to keep the digression to a minimum and not do that here, do it somewhere else, do it on another video. Um, Basically, the point that I want to make is an observation that I've made. Is that uh, Jesus uh, healed the sick, obviously. And as a consequence of that, there are people today whose entire lives are devoted to healing the sick. There, are, there is obviously an entire industry devoted to that cause. Um, and uh, people, or I'm sorry, Jesus uh, drove out, uh, Jesus uh, performed exorcisms, and as a consequence of that, it's sort of um, on the fringe or outside the mainstream as it may be. Nevertheless, it is still true that there are people whose entire lives are devoted to performing exorcisms. And when you think about that, you immediately start thinking about the Catholic Church, which is valid. Uh, they do a lot of that. Um, but there's a lot of people, actually, that do it. So, um, Jesus fed the hungry. So, you know, as a consequence, uh, there are people that whose lives are devoted to feeding the hungry. In Jesus name so I want to say in Jesus name because obviously in the history of the world and in our and, and in our present world there are people who heal the sick uh, and it has nothing to do with Christianity uh, there are people that uh, do exorcisms and it has uh, nothing to do with Christianity believe it or not that is true in one particular instance uh, that I'm aware of, I know that there are more than this, but there's one that I'm aware of. Uh, there's uh, shamans that do uh, exorcism, and I guess shamanism is kind of a up-and-coming, uh, you know, spiritual interest for people. Um, and of course, then there are people that feed people, and has nothing to do with Christianity. It's just sort of a secular uh, benevolence uh, undertaking. So, but uh, I, I would tend to think that Jesus had a big influence on all of these things, all of these activities. So, but specifically, I'm talking about people who do it in Jesus' name. So, and there's tons of those. I mean, Catholic Church and and uh, Christian Church, uh, just in general. So, all over the world. You know, and uh, I think that uh, probably these undertakings inspire other people to do it who are not doing it for the sake of uh, their Christian.
Christian faith or in Jesus' name. So, so I, I think I covered all the caveats, all the uh, fine print disclaimers on all of that. Hopefully, I try to. I always try to. It makes the conversation kind of complicated and hard to follow when you do that, though. So, it's like reading a legal document. It's very painful, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> so, all of that is true, right? Uh, so let's try to think of the other things that Jesus did. Uh, Jesus uh, challenged authority. And this is the one that's a, a particular of particular interest to me. Because I'm starting to get the impression that it's what I'm wired for. I'm not proud of that fact. I'm not happy about that fact. On the one hand, on the other hand, I'm not ashamed of that fact, and I'm also not unhappy about that fact. And to me, it just is what it is. Um, in some ways, I'm happy about it, and in some other ways, I'm unhappy about it. I mean, I'm happy about it because it gives you a very palpable, tan almost tangible, real and present sense of freedom. And I'm not saying that I'm more free than anybody else. I'm just saying that the freedom that I have is tangible. It's like right there, you know? Because it, when you're challenging authority, you are by default, uh, you know, expressing your freedom from authority, right? Whereas people who have other, other who are wired for different things to feed the poor, heal the sick, perform exorcisms, maybe they, they're not so keyed in or clued in or conscious of the ministry of Christ in challenging authority, you know? So maybe they're more, they have a more passive sort of a stance when it comes to authority. They don't have that, they don't have that defiant, uh, getting a call here. They don't have that defiance, you know, that defiant spirit that, uh, and so they don't feel, they don't, they don't experience their freedom quite as palpably, quite as, uh, in, with quite the instant gratification, you know. On the other hand, you know, if, if there was anything that Jesus was, was executed for, I think we can all agree that it was, uh, probably had a lot to do with challenging authority, right? So there's definitely a downside to this particular uh, thing and uh, this particular uh, ministry, you know. Uh, there's definitely a downside to it. I'm not saying that I don't expect to be executed. I don't expect to be killed. I don't even expect to be persecuted. But the fact of the matter is the, the threat is, uh, is there, you know, and it's real. And you have to always be cognizant of the fact that it is a possibility, not necessarily for anything I've done or am doing, but, you know, if this really is a person's ministry, then you never know where you're going to be called. You never know, you never really know what authority you're going to be called to defy, you know? And uh, so, on the theological side of things, people might say, well, no, Jesus was crucified because he claimed to be God, and technically I would agree that would be true, but yet still... I, I think the argument could be made that claiming to be God was an act of, act of defying authority because I'm sure Jesus knew that that is something that they would kill you for in those days. So I need to return this call on two videos. I'll be back.